Hey guys, welcome to the fourth video of my series on data classes in Python. In this video, we're going to learn about the concept of post init processing in data classes. So without any delay, let's get started. So till now, we have been working with a very simple example of a class person in which we have been using the three properties of our class object, which are name, city and age. But now in this particular example, I have added one more property for my class object, which is is underscore senior, which specifies if a given person is a senior citizen or not. And since this value can be true or false, I am providing the type hint as bool. So now the thing is that I do not provide the value of is underscore senior while instantiating my class object because is underscore senior is a property which can be um, which can be obtained by using the value of age itself that is if the age is greater than or equal to 60 I can set the value of is underscore senior is true otherwise I can set it as false right so now the thing is that in order to do this particular logic thing I need to put this code somewhere but I cannot put this code in the init function itself because the init function is now defined by default in the data class and that is responsible for taking all these properties as parameters and then setting them as the um, object or setting them as the properties of my class object. So now I need something, I need some function which gets called as soon as my init function is done with its processing. And for that particular thing, we have something called post init. So post init is a function which gets triggered. It's a magic function which gets triggered as soon as the uh, processing of init function is complete so it takes the reference to your class object only and then you can do any kind of thing here so let's say I do if self dot age is greater than or equal to 60 then I will set the value of self dot is and is underscore senior equal to true otherwise I will set the value of is underscore senior as false so this is my logic and I'm putting it in post init, which means that as soon as the all the task of taking some initialization parameters and setting them as the properties of my class object is done. After that, this particular function is called and it will do any kind of logic thing that I want to do. OK, and also I can set init equal to false in the field function declaration for my is senior function is senior property. I can do field. Um, in it equal to false so we have seen the concept of um, field function in the last video itself and we know that if I set in it equal to false then this particular um, class property will not be a part of my initialization function okay so now let's try it out I will be setting p is equal to person in which I have to pass name I have to pass city and I have to pass age. I do not need to pass or if I pass senior is underscore senior value then that will be at, um, an error. Okay, so I can only pass three values which is name city and age. So I am doing this. Let me pass 65 as my um, as the age. Okay, so now let's see what is the value of p dot is underscore senior. Look at that. That is true. So what happened here is that first of all when this block was run um, person this particular thing instantiated my class object and the init function was called which took three parameters name city and age and after its processing was complete post init function was it's called automatically because it's a magic function which gets triggered when the init function processing is complete and here we did um, if self dot age is greater than or equal to 60 then we set the value of is senior is true otherwise we set it as false right so in this way um, we can set the values of all those properties whose value we do not want at the time of the object initialization but we have some kind of logic which we can apply in the initialization part itself so that's why for those kind of cases we can use the post underscore init magic function so this is how you use the post init in the data class i hope the concept of post init processing is clear if you still have doubts you can put them in the comment section below that's it from this video thanks for watching